Hello friends, my greetings to everyone. I am Seema. I head business analysis practices at Eisenbridge. Eisenbridge is key sponsor for the Discuss Agile Network. And Discuss Agile Network is most popular agile communities in India. Its effort to connect professionals to share their knowledge and experiences and to take their skills to the next level. And for the purpose, we also conduct frequent webinars. And today, we are conducting webinar on Scrum for delivering value. So friends, I welcome you all on this segment of Discuss Agile webinar series. Before commencing, I would like to know you through some polls. And here, I'm going to launch my first poll that is related to your role in the organization. Which of the following represent your project role? Scrum master, product owner, development team, project manager, team lead. If any role is not listed here and if you are at lead position that is not a scrum master, then you can choose team lead. And for other uh, roles, you can choose development team as it covers all the position within the team. Okay, friends, I'm closing the poll to share the results with you. And here is the result. 35% uh, people voted for Scrum Master and 3% for Product Owner. 13% for development team, 33% for project manager, and 18% for team lead. So most of the people are a scrum master already. Good. So I'm launching my second poll to know about scrum. What do you understand by scrum? Is it a methodology? What is your belief? Most of the people have been voted so I'm closing the poll here and sharing the results with you 67 percent people are saying that scrum is a methodology and 33 percent people are saying no it is not a methodology okay we will see uh, during the webinar I will address this question throughout the session my third poll is related uh, to the your scrum uses are you using scrum in your projects okay most of the people voted 90% uh, votes are in I'm closing the poll and sharing the results with you 80% people are saying that they are using scrum great so I will cover the webinar topics as per your expectations based on your answers uh, using these polls. Okay, here is the agenda of today's webinar session. First, we will cover the Scrum overview. Scrum is a powerful set of practices and principles and which helps to deliver business value. Initially, Scrum was uh, introduced to, for the software development products, but it can be used for any scope of work for any innovative solution. Possibilities are endless. So in this section, we will cover the basic overview of the Scrum. And in second seg section, knowing Scrum, after completion of this section, if you are using Scrum, you will get to know that what factors can prevent you to deliver business value. And if you are not using a Scrum, this section will help you to know how Scrum can be used to deliver business value at faster pace. There are some factors which prevent us to deliver value. It is a lightweight framework, simple to understand, but difficult to master. And at the end of this section, you will get details what are needed to master Scrum to deliver value. In third section, uh, I will cover 
the basic important points to conclude the scrum and in last segment i will brief the our online scrum master program here the first section scrum overview so let's define the scrum framework a framework within which people can address complex adaptive problems while productively and creatively delivering products of the highest possible value this definition comes from the scrum guide when we look at this definition three important things come out first thing it is a framework framework is not a process framework is not a method method guide us with the set of steps to solve our problems framework provides a structure where we can use our own processes and tools and it provides a minimum viable structure and with the help of this minimum viable structure and on the top of uh, our own methods and processes we can solve complex problems if set of procedures are already defined then problems is not at all complex the third thing is it helps to deliver highest possible value in shortest time frame so scrum is a framework it is lightweight because it provides a minimum viable structure in terms of roles artifacts and events and rules which keep these things together it is difficult to master why it is difficult to master because we need to adapt according to our environment according to our situation we need to take our learnings into account and it takes time because for the adaptation we need to respect each other we need to have trust within the team members and we need to have courage for our problems for our progress and we need to be open and these things takes time that's why scrum is difficult to master and at the end of this webinar session you will get important details that what are needed to master scrum yes i know many of you are already using scrum but this webinar will help you to know the real intent of scrum framework scrum it is a empirical process control the simple meaning of empirical it is based on observation it is based on experiments so the empirical process model of process control provides an exercise control through frequent inspection and adaptation for processes that are imperfectly defined and generate unpredictable and unrepeatable output it generate unrepeatable output means it is a complex problem for empirical process control three things are important first is transparency where we use common language we use common definition of done and we are having a system in place where everybody knows what is going inside so why providing transparency in the system we execute our exploration cycle and at the end of exploration cycle we produce something that can be inspected that can be evaluated and based on the output of inspection we adapt our environment we adapt our behavior we adapt our processes and we adapt our plans so in scrum learning plays an important role by transparency inspection and adaptation we take learnings and we adapt because we have learned something at frequent interval so 
there are five values and if we focus on these value it helps to master the scrum framework and i already told you that scrum is difficult to master and it takes time the first value is focus scrum do believe in single undivided attention it focus on start finishing rather than start initiating things because if you are initiating things it generate partially done work and it generate high wip work in process and work in process doesn't provide any value to the customer so scrum doesn't believe in multitasking it believes in single undivided attention the second value is courage courage to say no if you are not able to complete some work courage to take target courage to take commitments and courage to show your problems and progress courage to share information these all things are very important for the successful implementation of scrum respect it is very important that we respect each other if something is not working rather than fixing a personal behavior we need to see our processes and how the mistakes problems are generated in the system we do believe that everybody works as per best of their abilities so we inspect behavior uh, that comes from the processes openness development of complex problems or solution of complex problems will not work if we are not open for our ideas for our problems and progress it is very important that we are we are sharing our ideas as we knows about it commitment for the work is very important it generate trust in the system it generate trust with the stakeholders and it is very important that we have trusting with each other so these scrum values are important to master the scrum framework the next section is knowing scrum let's explore the scrum in action so scrum is a lightweight framework it provides the three artifacts artifacts are product backlog sprint backlog and working software or increment roles there are three roles product owner scrum master and development team four ceremonies sprint planning meeting daily scrum sprint review and sprint retrospectives these ceremonies are the opportunities to inspect and adapt initially product owner creates product backlog he is responsible for the product backlog and during the sprint planning meeting development team pulls the top backlog items based on their capacity and come up with the sprint backlog this sprint backlog is owned by the development team development team has a fixed consistent duration in terms of exploration where they perform the work to meet the sprint goal they meet every day to inspect their previous day work and to adapt the next day work or same day work and product owner is always available for the requirement clarification product owner is the person who knows most about the business objectives and during uh, the sprint exploration scrum master keeps the development team focused towards their goals he or she is responsible to remove impediments so <clears throat> during the day they inspect what they have done 
previous day and adapt the next day work or same day work. At the end of the sprint, a potentially shippable product is delivered. Potentially shippable product means it can be used by their users. And everybody knows that what is the meaning of the done work. And at the end of the sprint, there are two opportunities of inspection and adaptation. The first is the sprint review where increment or working software is inspected. And what is adapted? Product backlog. Product backlog is adapted where stakeholders can come up with the new ideas when we see uh, the product. Sprint review is an informal opportunity where stakeholders provide the feedback Development team provides the demo and based on that product backlog is adapted. The next opportunity to inspect and adapt is the sprint retrospective where people behavior, team dynamics and procedures are inspected and they adapt the behavior or processes which are needed to meet the product goal. Here, in during the sprint retrospective, everybody is participant and a courage is required to report problems. Even if the product owner is not working well, anybody can raise this issue during the sprint retrospective. Everybody is participant. This is an opportunity to inspect the people relationship, team dynamics and, pros and procedures and with the belief that everybody wants to work within the best of their abilities. So, <clears throat> next, after the sprint retrospective, the next exploration cycle is repeated with the sprint planning meeting where team selects again the sprint backlog uh, from the top of the product backlog items. So this is the basic framework with the, uh, in terms of uh, artifacts, product backlog, sprint backlog, and increment uh, in terms of three roles, product owner, scrum master, development team, four ceremonies, sprint planning meeting, daily scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospective. Within this framework, you can use your own processes, your tools, processes to uh, develop code, processes to estimate the items, processes to run your testing procedures. Whatever is required to meet your goal, you inspect and adapt. And this minimum structure uh, in terms of roles, artifacts, and ceremonies, and rules to keep these th uh, three things together, and your own processes and tools all together helps you to solve complex problem. So what is needed to master Scrum? You need to know these uh, events, artifacts and uh, ceremonies and how you can inspect and adapt your processes, behavior and based on that, what tools and techniques, what methods will work for you. And learning plays an important role throughout the execution cycles. Some of the Scrum anti patterns. If you are using Scrum, we believe that Sprint Zero, Hardening Sprint, Spatial Sprint are part of Scrum. But actually, these are not part of Scrum. Sprint Zero is not part of Scrum. Why is Scrum uh, doesn't believe in Sprint Zero? Because Scrum be says that there is no special treatment for any sprint. Each sprint delivers business functionality. Yes, yet yeah, you can be involved in architecture envisioning, in re developing release plan, but at least develop some basic functionality that can prove your architecture. Initially, your value delivery could be less. And with few sprints, it, it start increasing. 
but with each sprint you need to deliver business function uh, value and business value is always measured in terms of increment in terms of features and functions of in the product not in terms of documentation not in terms of partially done work you cannot take credit of any work that is not usable that is that is not value added to the business so scrum says no to the sprint zero hardening sprint this is second anti pattern scrum says no to it and it is related to the last sprint scrum team deliver software or working product at the end of each sprint but they keep pending some items which prevent uh, the delivered software usable at the end of every sprint you need to deliver a sprint which is usable which can be used by its and customers for example few days back we deliver a practice test for an online program we agreed with the three practice test and one week sprint middle of the during the mid of mid sprint we observed that we we will not be able to produce all the three practice test and initially we were agreed that okay first we uh, we will double up first practice test then second practice test then third practice test and at the end of the uh, sprint we will develop the user manual and a system to generate keys to activate the program but when during the mid of the sprint we sensed the situation that it won't be possible to complete the work then what we did we re negotiated the work with the product owner uh, saket uh, that okay come up with the two practice tests and instead of starting third practice test we should work on the user manual and uh, for the system which can generate keys to activate the program so we deliver the practice test two practice tests and in form which will be usable by the our customer so uh, whatever you del deliver at the end of the sprint it should be usable it should be based on the definition of done any work which cannot be used it is not accepted so please avoid the practice where you keep things uh, pending and at the end of the uh, product development or during your last sprint you uh, design a special sprint where you tend to complete items which makes your product usable scrum says no to it deliver working software deliver usable product with each sprint that is the core practice within the scrum framework another anti pattern is special sprint some development team use first sprint for the requirement analysis second uh, sprint for the design uh, development and third sprint for the code writing scrum says no to it idea is simple we need to reduce the feedback cycle we need to have some predict pre predictability in the system if you are producing requirement document it cannot be used because value is measured in terms of working software or in terms of usable product if something is changed you cannot use that product documentation because things become obsolete so with each sprint you have to do little of requirement analysis development testing and continuous integration so these are some few anti patterns which are very important to know to deliver business value throughout the exploration cycles so scrum in summary 
it is a framework it is not a methodology framework because here learning is important and you execute your development based on the inspection and adaptation and you sense the situation and based on the situation you adapt your processes your plan and your working software development scrum bind together the events roles and artifacts by the way of rules these rules keep together the events roles and artifacts so each component within the framework serves a specific pur purpose and is essential to scrum successful uses scrum team means three roles product owner scrum master and development team events four events daily scrum sprint planning meeting review retrospective artifacts product backlog sprint backlog and increment these all are needed and each component plays an important role nothing can be excluded and because it is a minimum viable structure and scrum can be scaled the recommended size for a team is 3 to 9 according to scrum guide and if you are developing a product where a large team is required development team is responsible to divide the team based on the minimum dependencies and another ceremony can be used like scrum of scrum to have a potentially shippable product in case of scaling a single product backlog is used a single definition of done is used and definition is definition of done is very important to have transparency in the system so these are some misconception that uh, okay if we are scaling scrum we can use separate product backlog no we can use separate definition of done no because definition of done and product backlog are associated with the product and at the end we need to have potentially shippable product if more than one team is uh, we are if we are using more than one team at the end we need to integrate again doesn't matter we, we are we are using more than one team we need to integrate the product at the end of sprints Okay friends I'm closing the webinar thank you very much for joining in